Okay, the last、uh, mathematical tool that we need to tell you is about how a parameter may affect the objective value. So consider a function small f, which is affected by x and theta, and the optimization problem of trying to maximize small f with respect to x. You may interpret x as your decision variable, and the theta something you cannot control as your parameter. Okay. So here, z star of theta means that、uh, given some parameter theta. You try your best to find an optimal x, and then according to your optimal decision, how much you are going to earn. So this is your optimized objective value or the maximum attainable objective value, given theta. Okay, so it's a function of theta. If we say that x star of theta is the maximum or the maximizer of small f, okay. Then we can further express z star of theta as this. It's just that we plug in the optimal solution of x into our objective function. Then we're going to get z star, of course. Okay. Here, uh, make sure that you know we are using the notation in instead of equal because you can have multiple optimal solutions. Now, what we are interested in is this quantity. Okay, suppose this can be differentiated. Then we want to ask what's the derivative of z star of theta. How does theta affect the objective value? Okay, one particular application of that quantity is that we want to know how an outside, how an exogenous parameter. May affect the equilibrium utility of a specific person. Okay, we typically say, okay, there's a supply chain, there are manufacturers, retailers, and blah blah blah. And eventually, we ask, what would happen if the unit production cost goes up? For example, the exogenous parameters change would change also the player's decision. Okay, because players try to. Try the best to find their optimal solutions, and then given that their optimal payoff would also change. So you are asking, uh, how the the parameter affect their decision, and then affect their payoff. Okay, I now want to ask directly, how does theta, how does the parameter affect its payoff? So as a very quick example. Suppose f of x theta is defined in this way, okay? Theta minus、uh, x minus theta square. Given that theta is fixed, we have this as our optimal solution, okay? You can very quickly verify that this is concave. So your first order condition gives you an optimal solution. If theta is theta, then your optimal x would also be theta. If you plug in that back to the formula. Then you are going to get theta as your z star of theta. Okay. Then obviously, if you take the differentiation, then you are going to get one. Well, that's、um, a very basic example about what we are talking about. This is the, for example, a utility function. This is a parameter. Given that parameter, a decision maker finds the optimal solution. Plugging it, you get the utility. As a function of the parameter, and then you do the differentiation. That's your、uh, that's the impact of the parameter on your equilibrium payoff. So to find this particular derivative in general, we follow the three steps: find the optimal solution according to theta, plugging that into the objective function, and then take the derivative. Nothing special here. We want to ask that may we do this thing,、uh, in some sense, in a more di- direct way, or may we change the order of doing the three steps, and then with the envelope theorem, we're going to show you that we can. We're going to use a different order. I will still first find an optimal solution, but instead of plugging that solution into the objective function. 
I'm going to first take the derivative of the objective function. Okay, and as you will see, typically that would be easier. And after I take the derivative, then I plug in the optimal x. I'm going to show you that this and that will give you the same thing. Okay, and then if this is going to be easier, then we're going to prefer using the envelope theorem because in many cases that can greatly reduce the amount of calculation we need to do. So proposition one. Proposition one is that given a function small f, that x star of theta be an optimal solution when theta is given, and that z star of theta be the optimized objective value. Then if you want to find how theta affects z star of theta, what you may do is to first, you take derivative of f with respect to theta by assuming that x is a constant. And after you do that, after you find the derivative, then plug in the optimal solution as a function of theta. So let's see how to use it. Oh, sorry, let's see how to prove it first. So, <clears throat> I want to calculate this, right? And z star is just f of x star, and then theta. So, this is just by definition. And then, when I go from the first line to the second line, I use something called the total differential formula. Okay, because f has two components. f has two um, parameters or two arguments. So, what I should do is to first you um, take a derivative of f with respect to the first argument. And then the first argument itself is a function of theta. So I need to do that again. Uh, and then multiply them. And then I need to do a second part. f has a second argument. So I need to differentiate f according to the second argument. Okay, so this is how I get this particular thing. Uh, according to our um, the so-called total differential formula. Once I do that, I'm going to plug in the optimal solution into um, those uh, x parts. Uh, and you're going to plug in x to here and here, uh, because at this moment you are assuming that x is still a constant. Okay, x is still a constant. And then you plug in after that. So from here to here, you are talking about total differential. And then, okay, so now let's do it. Let's plug in x. Let's plug in x. The interesting thing is that when you plug in x into the first term, because the value of your x is an optimal solution, so when you plug in, you are going to get 0 directly. Why? Because your x star satisfies the first order condition of small f. So that's why this particular derivative must be zero at any optimal solution. Right? If x is really optimal, then f would be uh, the de derivative of x must be zero at that optimal solution. So that's why we can cancel out the first term and eventually only get the last term. And that's exactly your envelope theorem. F, take derivative with respect to theta by assuming that x is a constant. And after that, plug in your optimal solution. So consider the example that we did um, two slices ago. Now I don't want to plug in x first. I want to first find the derivative. And if I try to do that, now I take derivative with respect to theta by assuming that x is a constant. Okay, so I get 1 plus 2 times x minus theta. Oh, here, I don't treat x as x of theta. I only treat it as a constant. And after that, after I find this, I then plug in x with its optimal value. And then I get 1, exactly. Or, as in another example, I have this. Okay, small f as negative 1 over 3 times x to the power of 3 plus theta times x. Now, if I don't have the envelope theorem, what I should do is to first 
find an optimal solution. Okay, again, you can verify that with first order condition, this is your optimal solution. And then plug in that to get z star of theta as a function of theta. Okay, I can do it. And then lastly, do the differentiation. With the envelope theorem, we can use a different way. First, I have the optimal solution. I'm going to keep it for a while because later I need to use it. And then, without plugging x, I take the derivative directly by treating x as a constant. By treating x as a constant. In that case, the first term would just become 0 because there is no theta there. And here, theta would just become 1. So that's why I get x as the outcome. And then all I need to do is to plug in the optimal solution into x. I get square root of theta. Okay, so this and that, they are the same, of course, because envelope theorem allows us to change the order of the calculation. Finally, I hope you can convince yourself that the optimal x indeed satisfies the first order condition. Okay, this is something that you may verify, and once you plug in, it will also be zero. That's going to be always true, because according to our proof in the previous slides, well, it's a curve, it's an optimization problem. And then you claim this is optimal, so it satisfies the first order condition. That's why this derivative becomes zero. Okay, so that's the three tools that you're going to use in later derivations. So yeah, when they happen, uh, I'm going to remind you again, so don't worry. Thank you.